This is a recording of my visit to Dr. Theory Vrain and Chanchal's farm in his free on the 28th of April 2013. She's a herbie, uh, she's a medical herbie. She has uh, studied medicinal plants 25 years ago and uh, has treated people with medicinal plants for that long time. So if you have breast cancer or prostate cancer or she treats mostly cancer, most, most of her uh, patients have cancer, and you come to her, she will give you advice on you know, how to change your life and what to eat and what to take. And, um, and it's and advice, not, not a professional. Yeah. And you're uh, saying a few things, how you can cure uh, cancer? Cancer. I thought it was a genetic disease of some kind. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a Old age disease. There's a genetic base to everything. Cancer is basically a stress disease. It's stress. Oh, I see. Whether it's chemical, emotional, psychological, physiological and definitely there would be a genetic base. Mm -hmm. But how you live and what you take, your food, your whether you smoke or alcohol or anything like that or anything that stresses your body mm -hmm. has a huge impact. Mm -hmm. Pharmaceuticals, chemicals, etc. Anyway, this is our teaching garden. She's got I don't know, a hundred different kinds of plants I think. Teaching garden. So she's teaching, she's consultant, but she's teaching students she, what they can grow. She to, to is the chair of the Botanical Medicine Department of the Boucher Naturopathic School in uh, New Westminster. So all the naturopathic doctors learn medicinal plants from her. Oh. And the bio, uh, the pharma industry and the medical profession are not trying to stop this because it cuts into their business? Big time, eh? Oh, yeah, big time. I think there's a recent, like the government recently climbed, uh, climbed down on, on all kinds of health products, medicinal plants, everything. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. So what are the mats that you're using for mulch? This is hay. But don't do what I do, unless you find hay that's been fermented. Right. So this hay was really fermented. It was covered with uh, fungus when I bought it for cheap, actually. It couldn't even be used for food. Right, but it it's perfect great. for compost. It's perfect for compost. So, so it was, how did you, know, you get it in such nice square pieces? Cheap because it, it comes apart. It, it's in bales. It's in bales just like regular oh, okay. hay. So you can actually take it out by layers. It comes okay. apart really, really easily. Yeah. 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 Great. And then you come back two or three months later oh, and wow. it's full of earthworms. Yeah. Wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah. I was just over at uh, uh, Carmen's yesterday, and they've been mulching with uh, the seed trays because they they uh, have a small small layer of some kind of soil mix that they use for sprouting the peas in particular. And they have a huge quantity of these mats, which are about the same size as yours. And I was thinking, God, are you guys growing some kind of seeds here and then turning them over to mulch just like Carmen is? Yeah. If you keep hay covered in some sort of a, like a plastic sheet, or eventually it'll start rotting or fermenting, eventually? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. These guys are really nice people, but they don't know anything about food production and soil mm. yet. No, I'm sorry. They're so on ashamed. a big learning curve. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually, Sherry, you tell them what's in this This is mix. seaweed. This is seaweed from the, from the beach. I go and collect seaweed in the fall mostly, from uh, November to January, February. So it's seaweed and there's some dead leaves because the dead leaves come from the land. They end up in the rivers and they come to the sea and they end up on the beach. So there's a good amount of, of leaves and some seaweed, you can still see the seaweed. Mm -hmm. And you just leave them? And I just leave them. If I was, uh, if I had nothing to do, nothing better to do, the best thing would be to incorporate it, to put it under the soil. Oh, I see, I'll mix it a little bit. And yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> this way, to do. <laughs> this way, it 
it's on the ground, it protects the soil. So it's called mulching. And it'll take a year or two to... It will take a year. To be consumed by the... Yeah. Earthworms and fungus yeah. and bacteria and, and go back into all the, the microorganisms. Food chain, food yeah. it, it, really, in the soil, it's the bacteria and the fungi that do all, all the work. And maybe a bit of nematodes. When you see worms, it's something you can see with your eye. You can't yeah, see fungi or bacteria. Oh. So when you see earthworms, it's a sign that you have a lot of bacteria yeah, in the soil. Because earthworms are using those guys. Exactly. If you, if you have a lot of bacteria, you have a lot of decomposition, you have a lot of activity, you have a lot of fertility. Yeah. And the earthworm tells you you have a lot of fertility. Because you can't see the microscopic work. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's mm -hmm. Are you a molecular biologist or a biochemist or a geneticist? Mm, some of that. I was hired by Agriculture Canada, the, Depart the Federal Department of Agriculture, to go back to go to school and get a PhD in plant pathology. Plant pathology? Plant diseases. Mm -hmm. And I did that at North Carolina State University. They basically sent me to the best place on the planet the to Duke. get... No. no, Duke is in medicine, no. NC State. Okay. Uh, in, um, North Carolina. Yeah, the capital. Charlotte? No. Oh well. Uh, anyway, I, I became a nematologist. Nematodes are little mm -hmm. microscopic worms in right. the ground. And some of them are parasitic on plants, and that's what they wanted, and so I did that. So I became a soil biologist, specialized in... The nematodes are multicell or like bacteria? Nematodes have... Are bigger a, than bacteria? Nematodes have about 1,000 cells. Oh. They're worms. They're microscopic worms. When mm -hmm. you look at them on the microscope, they look like snakes. Oh. They're little snakes, tiny snakes. Mm -hmm. Mostly they eat bacteria. Mm -hmm. But there's a few species that feed on the plants. And they become pests, just like insects. Mm -hmm. And then about after 15 years of doing that, I discovered molecular biology as a tool. So I learned molecular biology. And at then, work? At work? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I discovered genetic engineering, mm. so I learned that. Wow. So I finished my career, the last 10 years of my career. I was a manager by then, uh, but I was a genetic engineer. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I had a bit of a... Fantastic. Yeah. Learning curve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, medicinal plants, but that's not what I do. Because I grew up here.